Let's do it. It's weather for Weather Geeks time on this Tuesday evening. Got a lot of cool stuff to show you uh, tonight, even though we're in the middle of a pretty quiet weather pattern. Uh, let's start out tonight with the International Space Station. Uh, hopefully you have the Storm Tracker 21 app. You got a nice alert sent by me uh, a little after six o'clock saying, hey, the space station's gonna fly overhead. This is one of the brightest and best uh, flyovers we've had in quite a while, up at uh, about 85 degrees in elevation, about as bright as it gets. And uh, it was a great opportunity for Leanne to uh, share this uh, long exposure photograph. She uh, is really good at these and likes to send us uh, these uh, long exposure photographs of the space station flying overhead. So that is a really, really good one. That is a keeper. All right, uh, the space station put together some facts uh, for those who may not be all that familiar with what the space station is all about. Uh, this is the largest man-made object ever put into space and it's really expensive. All told, estimates of about $120 billion for the cost of this thing. Of course, it was it was kind of put together uh, piecemeal and it took a long time, bit by bit. This was put together starting in the, I believe the late 90s. But uh, yeah, an estimate of $120 billion. And this thing moves along five miles per second is how much real estate it covers as it flies in low earth orbit. And only the moon and Venus are brighter objects in the night sky. Uh, so uh, really cool. You know, these space station flyovers are a great opportunity uh, for not only adults to learn, but uh, kids as well. I've, I've gotten a lot of great stories uh, via social media of, of uh, parents taking their kids out and, and showing them some real-time science. And uh, so I really uh, get a kick out of hearing those. If you've uh, passed those along to me, uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. All right, on to the weather today. Uh, we really outdid ourselves today temperature-wise. Our forecast was 61, but it got to 64 this afternoon. And you know, it's pretty rare for it to be this warm at this time of the year. Now, it wasn't a record today. Today's record uh, was 69 degrees. But for the end of the year, pretty rare stuff. From November 25th through December 31st, only 1.4% of days are this warm or warmer, uh, looking at the records going back to uh, 1930. So warm stuff today it was beautiful, just perfect outside. 64 locally, 66 was the high in Cleveland this afternoon, and 64 in the Steel City earlier on today. All right, the other cool thing I wanted to show you now, unfortunately, this was you know not a great situation for... Uh, this uh, structure uh, fire down in Salem, but it did provide an opportunity to, to show uh, in real time smoke on Doppler radar. The green here is not rain. This is smoke. A lot of times in large fires, you can see smoke on uh, modern Doppler radars. Sometimes we can see birds and bugs. And even in some circumstances, uh, traffic on interstates can be picked up on the radar depending on the atmospheric conditions. So we can see a lot of stuff and including uh, plumes of smoke. So that was kind of the, uh, the kind of the 2D look when we take a 3D slice uh, starting at around four, running this loop through six o'clock this evening. Uh, you can kind of really see that plume of smoke. This was easily visible in Canfield and Boardman in uh, the Sebring area and heading up towards uh, Youngstown as well. In fact, speaking of Youngstown, this time lives video, I uh, pointed our camera towards the sun setting and caught the smoke coming in uh, from the southwest from that Salem fire. So great sunset this evening and also uh, kind of interesting to see the smoke rolling into the Youngstown area with the uh, fire uh, to that uh, building down in Salem. All right, changes are coming. Uh, colder air is on the move. Compared to 24 hours ago, here in the 7 o'clock hour on this Tuesday evening, we're 15 degrees warmer than the same time last night. But look at the negative change out in Minneapolis, Omaha, Denver, Albuquerque. That's the air mass that's heading our way. Now, this is not an Arctic air mass. It's just going to kind of get us back to within shouting distance of average tomorrow afternoon. And this front is moisture starved. That is for sure. Our cold front's kind of right through here. And when I kind of zoom in on our local area, a couple of light showers up in Michigan. Uh, some of this is probably not even reaching the ground. So not expecting any rain here locally tonight. Just a band of clouds should just about do it. Tomorrow's going to turn out to be a partly to at times mostly sunny day with high pressure off to our west and a uh, flow around high pressure that's clockwise. So we're going to be into more of a northerly breeze tomorrow. You're going to notice the change, but it's still going to be a few degrees above average. Not bad at all. That high shifts east. We get into more of a southwest flow ahead of our front on uh, Thursday. This is our next cold front. This front will have a little more moisture to squeeze out. So we're looking for a couple of showers or a little bit of rain or a few hours of rain starting around mid-afternoon on Thursday. Those will be out of here by Thursday evening. And then <laughs> the way I put this at six on the news was a sea of tranquility under high pressure on Friday. And this is what's going to park overhead over the weekend. going to be a really nice day Friday and a really nice weekend coming up. Uh, we're not looking for much rain with this 
um, Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. All of our models are under a quarter of an inch. I think it's probably more like a tenth of an inch. Uh, certainly not much moisture with that next front. All right, the uh, big long range story after a nice weekend and a pretty mild start to next week with perhaps some showers on Tuesday. After that, it's going to be the cold. Uh, when I put this in motion, we're going to see the upper level pattern across North America really change and become more amplified as we go out into the middle portions of next week and the latter portions of next week. And, you know, this way I, way I put this earlier is this circular area here might as well have a face because that is old man winter. That is a pure Arctic air mass plunging southward out of uh, the Arctic regions, invading North America, spreading east. Uh, probably not record cold by any stretch of the imagination, but probably the, the most sustained period of cold weather we've had so far this year. Coming our way very late next week into the following weekend. And this probably does have some staying power. You know, I showed you the uh, modeling uh, last evening showing uh, that the, once this cold hits, it's probably going to stick maybe all the way through the end of the year. Um, not to say it's going to be just bone-chilling frigid every day, but we're going to say goodbye to the general mild pattern that we are in right now. So the 8 to 14 day outlook shows all that uh, colder than average weather east of the Rockies, and it's really going to heat up and turn really dry out west. I don't necessarily think that this colder pattern will be a super stormy pattern. There's probably going to be some snow. I think lake effect could be an issue, um, but it's a little too early to say whether this is the kind of pattern that's going to generate big winter storms for our region. Just too early to make that call, but uh, very high confidence it's going to get cold in about 10 days. Thanks for checking out Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. I'll see you tonight on 21 News at 11, and have a great rest of your Tuesday night.